Hey, what's up and welcome back to the channel. Super excited today, fishing at a reservoir I haven't been to in over three years. Last time I was out here, I only fished about one or two spots, so didn't really get to get around much. Super excited, pretty much have all day to fish. Overcast conditions all day long. Might get some sun around four or five o'clock. It's about 7.30 a.m. right now. So a lot of today is gonna be exploration, figuring this place out, getting used to the terrain, and getting used to this water. And guess what, guys? We're gonna do it together. Let's get at it. So I'm gonna start out by covering some water throwing a kayak around it's weedless got a lot of hydrillas where i'm at right now i'm only fishing in seven feet of water and i can see the hydrillas almost to the top i'm going to try to keep moving as much as possible try to locate where these fish are and what kind of pattern try to figure out a pattern on this i have no idea what's going on out here of course what i love about vegetation is it's a good place for bait fish and bass we're going to use it to our advantage try to throw baits that work with it so that's why I've got the Kitek Swim Impact Fat. This is one of my favorite swim baits to throw, just on a 1 8 weighted hook. I might tie on a weightless fluke or something like that. I am gonna try some top water as well. Just moving right now, I'm gonna get around this bend and be a little bit more out on the main lake. I'm in a big creek arm right now at the mouth of it, but I know there's some wind and some chop in the water over there. So I'll change my baits up once I get out there. Fishing off this point right here, pulled out the whopper plopper. This is the 110, so I'm throwing a medium size plopper. See if I can target something with decent size today. I know there's some monsters in here. Mm, got a strike, is he on? Oh, I got a missed strike on the plopper. Oh my gosh, come back for it, come back for it. Come back for it. So that's a good sign. Had a miss strike. I'm gonna toss right back in there. Let me slow it down a little bit. Again, I'm throwing a plopper because I've got wind right here. I like some disruption in the water when I'm throwing a plopper because the plopper creates so much havoc on top of the water. If the water is dead calm, I just feel like it's too aggressive of a top water bait. See the hydrillas all underneath the boat. I mean, six feet of water, only two feet of it is clear, right? So four feet of that is hydrillas. So I just downsized my plopper to a 90. This is a small, smallest plopper out there. And I did that because it has smaller trebles. It's a lighter bait. It should stay up in the top of the water a little bit better, hopefully, and stay weedless. Just experimenting, who knows? May not make a difference at all, but I figure it's worth a try. All right, guys, this is not working out for me at all. So it's not so much staying above the hydrillas that are submerged. It's more the stuff that's already been ripped up and floating off top. So I'm gonna give the plopper a little break All right, time for a bait change. I'm gonna tie on this chatterbait. See if I can keep the chatterbait above the hydrillas. I figure it's worth a try. Not weedless. Jeez, come on. I think this is gonna work. These hot drillers are killing me. I can't stay weedless. I already got grass. All right, so it's been a couple hours and I've targeted a lot of the laydowns along the bank. They look really good, but unfortunately the fish aren't attached to them. I've even gone up close to look. I haven't spotted any fish at all close to the bank. So I'm gonna move away offshore a bit, which should work out pretty good because there's a lot of vegetation even where I'm at right now. It's time to now rely on my graph and try to see if I can figure this thing out. What the? That does not feel very safe. Oh, oh. Something, something getting at it. Oh, there we go. Top water. Oh, he's a nice one. Oh, he's a nice one. 
I'm seeing, I was seeing some top water action in front of me and said, let me just cast right over there. First bass of the day. He's a nice one too. Oh, my net, I didn't even have my net out. All right, it's been over two hours. This guy is swimming towards me. All right, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Whoa, pulling drag, stay down, stay down, stay down. Yeah, he's still got some life in him. There we go, nice bass. Nice bass. All right, all right, all right, all right, he's running, he's running. All right, come on, buddy. Where's my net? I didn't even have my net out. All right, he's digging. All right, we're just gonna have to wear this one out a little bit because I don't have my net out. This is at least a two and a half, maybe three. Looks like he might be snagged in the head. Maybe I can get my net out. Uh, oh, this is crazy. This is crazy. Unprepared. Yeah, he is fighting. All right, let's just see if I can get him in. Come on up, buddy. Come on up. I always have my net ready and I don't today. All right, let's see if I can get him in. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. All right. Here we go. Here we go. It's nice. Probably a three pounder right here. Absolutely awesome. On a top water, bone colored plopper. Took me a couple hours to figure this out, but they're they're not up hugging the banks and had to come offshore a little bit. Still shallow with these hydrillas. Got on a nice one here. Yeah, he wasn't going anywhere. All right, here we go, here we go. Nice bass right here. Beautiful, let's get a weight on him. All right, we got three and a half pound bass right here, 3.5, excellent. This guy is beautiful, right on the top water. I am gonna throw some more top water right over there. I know you wanna go, buddy. I know you want to go. Beautiful top water bass right here, guys. Ooh, look at this guy. Let's get him back in the water. You ready? You ready, big boy? All right. Excellent. Ooh, I was getting in my head. I was getting in my head like, man, is this going to be one of those days? And saw the blow ups and said let's let's go ahead and toss over there away from the bank right over there three and a half let's go guys let's keep it going figures the one day i don't have my net out i need it but we worked it out he swiped at it twice and the second time he got it i know y'all over here you done showed me oh i see you i see you chasing my bait little guy way too small i don't even think that was a bass i'm not even sure what that was Let's try it. Let's try the shallow. Oh, got snagged on the shallow crankbait. I just tied it on first cast. First cast. The little, little guy came up and snatched it. Oh my gosh. I was throwing my orange belly craw around like I normally do. And I said, you know what? Let me change colors because I feel like the color will make a difference. So I tied on my just regular shad pattern, crankbait and first cast this little guy right here. Little dinker, still fun to catch. Tied on a little shallow runner. This thing only dies one to two feet because I'm just seeing way too much action up top. So I think I figured out what's been going on. These are actually smaller bass feeding up, which is why there's so much activity over here. That one I caught was a little dinky guy, but definitely hungry. Oh, got one. Let me get him in here quick. Very bad hook set. Very bad hook set. Oh, calm down, buddy. What do we have here? Could this be my first chain pickerel? I think so. Yep, chain pickerel, guys. First one. All right, calm down, guy. Calm down. Calm down. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're not coming off at all, ever. All right. Got a chain pickerel here. First one ever that I've caught. Little guy. Can't hold him much better than this. I'm gonna let him go because he was hooked up pretty bad. Yeah. 
Very nice. Go back, buddy. There you go. That broke the silence because it's been silent for a while, maybe about two hours or so. So welcome that fish just to get the blood flowing again. Just cranking along this bank, I was able to get away from the hydrillas that are down below and that little chain prickle snatched it on up. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, something bit at the tail on the mag drive. Ah, that is my first action I've ever had on this bait. I keep throwing it, determined to catch on it. This right here, whatever it was, wasn't big enough to take it. So I won't sweat it. We'll cast right back in. I need a big boy. This is what you call throwing for the big boys right now. Fishing right off of a point, right in front of me. Just posting up right here. I'm in about nine feet of water. So it's still pretty shallow where I'm at. I can see shallow spots. I can see little dark spots where there's holes in it. I'm just fishing this bait right over top. Trying to get something to come out and ambush this thing. So not a whole lot of action yet today, guys. It's been a grind. Three fish in several hours. I don't even know how many hours. It's about one. It's 1.20 right now. I think I started fishing about 7.45. Biggest fish was the first fish of the day and that got my blood pumping. I thought I could start slaying some slabs, but it kind of died off. Picked up the dink after that. And then the uh, my first chain pickerel. So that's a new for me. Always feels good to get a, a new species off the bucket list. So I'm gonna make a move right now. I'm gonna try to get away from all this hydrilla and I don't know that if that's even possible. I've been really limited in what type of baits I can throw due to all the grass, all the hydrilla, all the vegetation. So yeah, going to search around a bit, see what else I can find, what else I can get into around here. We still got more time to fish, let's go. Oh, there's something on, something on, something just took it. Oh, uh, not sure about the hook set, guys. Not sure about the hook set. Oh, it's a decent one, too. Please stay on. Please stay on. It's been hours. Oh, he's diving down. He's diving down. Oh, he's diving down. On the chatterbait, guys. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Stay on. Stay on. There we go. There we go, guys. There we go. Oh, a nice chunk. A nice chunk. Yes, sir. I believe he swiped at it and maybe missed and then went back for it. Chatterbait fish right here. About a two pounder. Excellent, guys. It's been several hours since the last catch. I tell you, I was about to call it and get in my head and be like, oh, it's time to go home. Nice fish right there. Solid two, two plus. Yeah, this is what I caught him on right here. This is the Z-Man Custom. Oh, yeah, I knew he striked it once before. Look, bit off the tail and then came back for it and annihilated it. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, let's get it. Ah, oh, man, it's been it's been quite some time. I'll pull up to this point. I'm just fishing some laydowns. I was able to get away from some of the hydrilla. There's still some grass up here, but let's manage to pull this one off. All right, there he goes. I want to get back in there and see if I can pull another one out before it's too late. It's been at least two hours since the chain pickerel and probably another two hours in between the pickerel and that little dink bass. This is a grind of day, guys. The bite's not that great. Happy to manage to pull off those four fish so far. Definitely want to get on another bass. Did I get is he on? Let's see. Yeah. Got another one, guys. On the chatterbait. Oh, he's nice. He's nice. Stay down. Stay down, buddy. Stay down. Stay down. All right. Chatterbait's doing it. Stay down. Stay down. Come on. Get in here. Get in here. Boat oh, flipped him. Oh, you wanted it. Yeah, you wanted it, buddy. Look at that, guys. Completely inhale the chatterbait. Inhaled it. Got a laydown coming right out here. Just tossed right in front of it at the end of it. Came across the laydown. He snatched it up. There we go. Still doing it. Wow. I think this is fish number five. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Yeah. Nice looking guy. All right, guys, picked up this one on the chatterbait. Beautiful, beautiful fish. About a pound and three quarters, maybe. Yeah. 
All right, let's get you back in. What you gonna do? You're free, you can go. You can go, buddy. There you go. I mean, getting those two on the chatterbait within maybe about 15 minutes of each other is a lot better than how it's been going today. Throwing soft plastics are just picking up way too much grass. So I'm kind of restricted to using a moving bait, at least for me. I know some people will throw a Senko through the grass. When I do that, I catch a lot of grass. I even tried slowing down to a drop shot and just no love on a drop shot. Did about nine hours today straight. So man, everything is hurting. Man, I need to learn how to cast with two hands. Had a really good day. What a reunion to get back out here after three years and actually get on some fish. I believe I caught six fish in all. The highlight of the day was that 3.5 on a top water. I mean, top water is always awesome to catch. I mean, the adrenaline rush on that, watching that blow up and you set the hook. I mean, nothing beats that. That was a 3.5. Caught a couple other decent sized bass as well. Surprisingly, the chatterbait showed his face today. Showed up. I believe three of the bass were on a chatterbait, which I've never done. I've, I've caught a chatterbait fish here and there, but not back to back. So it forced me to focus on how to fish the grass, what to target, which today worked out to be the points primary points and secondary points. Yeah, so again, coming out here will force me to learn how to fish grass much better than I do now. Thank you for riding with me today. We appreciate each and every one of you for supporting the channel the way you do. Can't wait to get back out on the water with you guys. As always, till we meet again, stay safe out there. We'll see you on the next video.